Welcome to I Rise Conversations with Joan. Welcome, welcome to I Rise Conversations with Joan, where we discuss the journeys of people who have overcome adversity and achieved success in their lives. My name is Joan Wosu, and I'm the award-winning author of the book, I Rise, The 10 Secrets to Getting Up When Life Knocks You Down. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Joseph Leonard. He is a cancer survivor, a former IT professional, an author, a blogger, a vlogger, a podcaster, a political activist, a speaker, a spokesperson, and he's also a writer. <laughs> he's the author of Ther Terror Strikes, Coming Soon to a City Near You, which is a, an Amazon number one bestseller. And his latest book is How to Write a Book and Get It Published. As an accomplished author himself, Joseph tries to aid aspiring new authors in achieving the dream, because it's a dream for a lot of people, of having their manuscript published and perhaps becoming a number one bestseller. Welcome, Joseph, to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And first <laughs> off, uh, uh, if you see if you see us on video rather than audio only, you could see in my background, it's Joseph M. Leonard. It looks like Leonard. It's not French. <laughs> it, it, it's Leonard without an O. And I have to use my middle initial M because there is a Joseph Leonard out of South Carolina that's an author. And there's also a Joseph M. Leonard with an O that's a, a an artist, does artwork. So, wow. Know, if somebody doesn't Google me right, then obviously they get page upon page of somebody else, Someone else. not me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I don't have that problem. Every time I Google my name, it's just me. <laughs> yeah, and, and the show, I Rise. Well, <laughs> I rose just barely this morning. I, I prefer to still be in bed. It's a little early for it's me. It's a little early for me, too. Though. Yeah, and this is Saturday morning. Yeah, the weather is not great, so yeah, I'd rather be in bed. <laughs> It's but, a good day to be sleeping in, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us, Joseph. Okay, well, so tell us, well, before we get into writing books and becoming an, a, an Amazon number one bestseller, maybe tell us a little bit about your background and your journey because you have been a lot of things and you have done a lot of things. So just give us a little snippet into the world of Joseph M. Leonard and, <laughs> and we'll go from there. All right, yeah, I've been in a hotel operations. Then I got into computer operations. I uh, was in IT most of my life uh, for various, you know, like automotive supply, retail. I worked for Kmart headquarters for a while, you know, before they decided to merge with Sears and sell off all their properties because the property was worth more than the retail operation. So, <laughs> but all that time, my entire life, virtually, I've been writing. I got the creative gene from my father's side of the family. He founded Ted Leonard Jr. and the Polka Kings. And you can still find their albums today. Oh, wow. He's got a lasting legacy. Rest in peace, Dad. Uh, <laughs> and... I dabbled in music in the 70s and 80s, but back then, you know, the only way to amount to anything was to do gigs, yeah. do a demo, get a recording deal, right? Well, I wasn't good enough for that, but I was good enough for writing books. And I did publish things on a local basis. And of course, now, uh, like then, then for publishing you had to write a book submit it to an existing oh, yeah. publisher yeah. hope and pray they would even open it let alone read it and like it enough to publish it uh it's like uh i like to refer to the uh movie where the crawdads sing only minor spoiler here great film love it it's like a to kill a mockingbird type style mm -hmm. old school film uh, book uh, and the lead character there, people comment always about her illustrations and that she should publish. Well, that takes place in the 60s or whatever. So you're dealing with that. The only way was to gather it all and send yeah. it off to publishers and hope. And in that 
story, she does get a book deal. Again, only a minor spoiler or still see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but times are different. Music, you can record it, put it up online for 99 cents a song. Anybody can do it now. Yeah. Same with publishing, thankfully, because the big publishers more or less have their stable of thoroughbreds, right? They're not looking for many new books or authors, unless if you're a J.K. Rowling, where you've yes. got a pre-built-in series of books. And Rowling's wasn't really an outsider based on the family she came from. So, you know, the old adage. It isn't always what you know, it's who you know, <laughs> right? I mean, I've gotten jobs that way myself, so I'm not knocking it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with uh, Vanity Press uh, and self-publishing and what I like to call the higher tier, which I went through, Illumify Media, McHenry Press, I call assisted publishing. Okay. It's a higher tier. There are, you know, like all things, it all depends. There are some people who can and in how to write a book and get it published, hints, tips, and techniques. I go from concept, writing, publishing options, post-publication marketing, mm -hmm. what to expect from reviews, because you can find a million books already on how to upload your book to Amazon. Well, when I was on shows talking about terror strikes coming soon to a city near you, they would often say, will you come back and discuss the whole writing and publishing process? So those books are fine, but this kind of book was mm -hmm. lacking that takes you through the beginning to the, the end. Yeah. yeah, that's why I thought, duh, that <laughs> book had to be how to write how a to book write and get it published, hints, tips, and techniques. And in fact, I use this that won't work for everybody. Obviously, it will work for you because you're a podcaster mm -hmm. and any other podcaster listening. Or with articles, if you've written any articles online anywhere, this trick will work for you. Take either your articles or your podcast. You could take a podcast, have it transcribed, and I did this with the book. I took four interviews that I discussed the very topics we're talking about today, had them transcribed, cut, paste, bam. There's, no way. There, there's, wow. the start, there's the start of my chapter. I cleaned it up, added additional thoughts. Then, of course, added additional chapters. So instead of like Terror Strikes, which actually took 15 years to write, I started in 2006, spent six months on it then. It wasn't quite right. I had a beginning, I had a middle, I had an end, but there were pieces missing. So I set it aside thinking, you know, a couple months, a year, two years. Well, 15 years later, the dream that inspired the book came back. So I finally picked it back up, spent another six months, and it was then ready. Well, how to write a book and get it published because all those, a lot of those things were already in those interviews. Yeah. I could transcribe it beginning to publish date three months. <laughs> okay. For anybody listening out there, because again, a lot of people get stuck because they think it's going to take a year, two years, three years. But here you're just breaking it down to a very sing simple process that anybody can do, record, do an interview, whatever it is, talk about the concept and transcribe it and just edit it. Put in exactly. it and that's it. And that's yeah. as simple as thing. But again, we're, we're oversimplifying it because a lot of people do have that desire to write a book. And maybe for you, it was clear. It was like, duh, like no one has written this. I'm, I'm going to write this, but not a lot of people are there. Some people don't even know what they want to write about. Is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? Is it science fiction? Is it, is it this? Is it a, an autobiography about my life? Is it, people are stuck. Most people who are in their mid, in the mid, going through a midlife crisis, like I like to say, <laughs> they all want to write a book. They want to leave a legacy. Your dad had a legacy and a book is, a, is one way to leave something that the future generation can always go back to read, but then people get stuck. So 
I know that your book does talk about, you know, the end to end process and we'll get into that a little bit, but I want to go back to your terror strikes uh, book. Why did you write that book? And it took you 15 years to write. Yeah. Well, like I said, it came to me. Yes. You know, and I discussed this in how to write a book and get it published. Everybody's process is different. That's the unfortunate part of how to write a book and get it published. I have to speak generically. Mm. Everybody uh, is everybody's inspiration and process will be slightly different. So I have to give you hints, tips, and techniques, and you have to then adopt what works for you. Mm -hmm. I can't uh, help inspire you, but my inspiration, generally, the books I've written over four or five decades come to me in dreams normally, as did Terror Strikes came to me in a dream in 2006 and like i said i i sat down i had uh, a firm beginning a middle and an end i had my ending and then like discussed in the book writer's block is yes. a general reality for everybody at some point then you just kind of have to set it aside uh, until the inspiration comes again. And I expected a year at most, I'd pick it back up. I moved on to other things, mm -hmm. but then that dream came back in 2021. And I said, oh yeah, I get it now. Now is the time. And like manna from heaven, the words just flowed onto the page. You know, uh, there were things from 2006 that were now a bit stale, I had to rework a little, you know, change, remove while adding some other. But yeah, that's where my inspiration comes from. But because of the Wuhan virus hysteria, now the 2022 release was the sensible date, the better date for that. So it was almost like divine intervention preventing me from doing it then yeah. to doing it now because uh, like with the isolation from the lockdowns, there are a lot of increases in suicides, yeah. regardless of age, occupation, whatever, because of the isolation from the lockdowns. Yeah. And one of the sub themes in the book, because terrorism isn't all that it's about, it's just the main thread that drives it together. Well, Law enforcement, as well as military, suffer PTSD and suicidal thoughts. Yeah. So I was able to use that as a basis to have a suicide prevention subset. So Terror Strikes, yes, about terrorism, but not a book about death, life and living. Life over death, hope over fear, uh, faith over despair, love over hate, uh, you know, uh, family and friends, individualism over collectivism, which is the whole terrorism battle, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So there's a whole lot more than just, you know, the storyline of terror. Oh, and baseball. If you like baseball, there's a baseball thread in here, too, which I, I can't discuss too much about. It'd be too big a spoiler, but yeah. it'll make sense when you read it. So if you're a baseball fan, this book is for you too. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. So I, I want to circle back to what you said about inspiration because I, I think for a lot of people, they get stuck because they're trying to force it. And I love what you said about the writer's block. Some people think when you have writer's block, just walk through it, just keep, keep hitting on that, keep focusing and it will force it to come. There are even people who sell like, do this exercises, do this meditation and it will flow. But I think like you, for me, when I was going to write my book as well, it was just, pretty much step away from it. And when the time was ready, like the words just flowed. There wasn't any yeah. struggle. There wasn't any overthinking. It just flowed. And oh, I think right. that's a huge lesson for anyone who is wanting to write a book. Don't try to force the process. Just wait for that inspiration to come. It will come to you. You will know what you should write about. You would know what type of legacy you want to leave behind. And once it comes, then you get on that process. And then when the writer's block comes, Forgive yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't say, I knew I wasn't a writer because there's a yeah. couple like, I had it myself. I was like, Joan, who are you kidding? You are not a writer. Who lied to you? 
You're not a freaking writer. Go back to do your IT job. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, a couple of things on that. I'm glad you reiterated and reinforced what I said. You know, writer block, you know, Tom Clancy, uh, uh, Dean, Coon, Dean, Dean Koontz, who terror strikes, uh, my writing style is compared to Dean Koontz. So if you like a Dean Koontz book, you should like Jared Strikes. Uh, Stephen King. I mean, all these people have writer's block. It, it's a normal, natural thing. And yes, forcing it can make it worse. Trying to force yourself can only add more. May. I, again, I, I never want to talk in absolutes here because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But for attempting to force may indeed just make the block worse. And here's a free tip. Oh, and before I forget, there is a supplement online to my book. So you can learn about how to write a book and get it published, hints, tips, and techniques, plus get a few freebie hints before you even buy the book, by going to tinyurl.com slash write and publish supplement. Okay. So tinyurl.com slash write and publish supplement. You'll see some of the freebie hints I give you to know that there's even better ones in the book. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so, yes, I mean, and here's a freebie from the book. Regarding inspiration, it can hit you anytime, any place. Most of us have a smartphone. Have your email app on your phone. And when inspiration hits you, if you're in the car, like don't text and drive, don't email and drive, pull to the side of the road, open up your email app and use Siri or Google Assistant to dictate yourself an email. Yeah. about your inspiration, whether it be paragraphs for a chapter you're thinking of or just notes about to add to your outline yeah. or maybe you thought, oh, I've got some great creative dialogue that I've got to include in this book. You know, dictate that into your phone. You know, some words won't come out right because yeah. AI isn't isn't right perfect. Yeah. But Again, you'll be able to cut and paste and clean it up, but get it down while it's fresh in your head, right? Yeah. And dictate it into your phone, then that yeah. way you've got it for later. Yeah. There's a quick, easy freebie. That's so quick. And, and that's a really huge one. So we've talked about inspiration when you're inspired, but now this is also the way to capture what it is you want to write. Back in the day, you would have to get a typewriter. Some people may not even know what that is, but you would have to get a typewriter. And you're like, dip, 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 and then you make a mistake. You're like, yeah, all of it. No, you don't have to do that anymore. You don't even have to sit in front of your computer and try to type every single word. Recording is one of the quickest ways. And that's what a lot of people do. Some people even get ghostwriters where you're not even recording. You're just telling someone a story and they go ahead and write whatever your thoughts are. So don't feel like, oh, I need to go learn some typing skills. I need to be a quick typer. No, just record. Whenever you get the inspiration, whip out your phone and record it and then go ahead and transcribe yeah. it. And and, that's and, an easy way to write a yeah. book. Let me, uh, I'm going, you can see I'm turning away here. I'm grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Here it is, what I was looking for. Let me give you an outline of the chapters in the book so you have an idea what's in there okay. uh, a forward and about the book and about the author of course but in the actual chapters are for starters your story outline that's where you want to start so you've got a structure uh table of contents outline researching you no matter what you're writing there's a certain degree of research that has to happen character development if it's a fiction book Scene development, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, you've got to set a scene. Uh, deadlines and contracts, publishing options, outsourcing, which spurred my thought to read this because ghostwriting is discussed in outsourcing. And I'm, I'm not one, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, ghostwriting has been happening forever, but in my opinion, that is dishonest and disingenuous 
which is not to say you can't have a ghostwriter write portions of your book. Mm -hmm. Or I suggest you can have a ghostwriter write all of it, but have on your cover written by John Q. Public, story by my name here. That, in my opinion, oh, honest, then, yeah. is yeah. the honest way to say it. It is your story, and you yes. deserve every bit of credit for yeah. it, but the person who wrote it does too. Now, the rest of the uh, chapters, the forward outline, if you have one or not. Editing. Edit, 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 and edit again. Have several people edit, because even Stephen King has mistakes in first edition books. I know somebody who's got one in his library. First edition Stephen King, I forget which book, with errors in it. It's, you know, it can happen. Even yeah. with spell checks, the 222 conundrum. Is it T-O, T-O-O, or T-W-O? That gets past the spelling and grammar checkers. Yeah. But it can be wrong, <laughs> yeah. right? And I tell a story about whole, H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E, -E, yeah. in my book. Again, that'll get by, yeah. but which is the actual right word? Formatting and typesetting, cover design, because yes, despite the saying, don't judge a book by its cover, That's they it's do. It's by the cover, yeah. If you cannot get their attention with the book cover, which is why my book covers are on my image, if you see in this on video, marketing, again, promote, promote, promote. <laughs> That's why they're in my background. Yeah. <laughs> Reviews behind the scene, uh, behind the book and an afterward. So those are what you can expect from my book. And then, like I said, tinyurl.com slash write and publish supplement gives you even more freebies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So that's a great rundown of anyone, things that you need to know if you want to write a book and get published. So I know some people might be thinking, okay, that's not, that's a lot. Like, cause for people, they think, oh, I'll just write it and forget about it. No one, a lot of people don't think about the marketing of the book. And that's why we have people, you printed books and it's just sitting in your, in your storage somewhere at home. And only your, your family has bought the book. In fact, they didn't even pay for the book. You give them the book for free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly why when people were doing interviews for terror strikes coming soon to a city near you and people would say, will you come back and discuss writing and publishing? I knew there was a market for this book, yeah. how to write a book and get it published, hints, tips and techniques. You need a, yes, it's available on ebook, but $10 on Amazon. That's it. $10 for the physical copy, then you can dog ear pages. You yeah. can use a yellow highlighter to highlight things. Mm -hmm. You don't have to memorize things. You can always use this as a reference book when you're stuck to go yeah. back to. Yeah, I love it. Okay, question now. Uh, and again, because you were talking about ghostwriters and like, I know I'm not a writer by naturally. I'm not, I'm not that kind of creative. Um, can anyone write a book? Oh, absolutely. Again, this kind of goes back to the to the hint uh, about recording your thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. We all are storytellers to some degree, right? Uh, right? Uh, you don't have to write the book as we discussed. Microsoft Word uh, doesn't support, but still has, you can access the dictate plugin yeah you or buy other software but you ultimately want your book in ms word 97 slash 2000 format that allows you there's another freebie for you mm -hmm. read the book to find out why the rest of it it ultimately allows you to get it the most places and in the most hands in some cases for free mm -hmm. okay but yeah Sit down and dictate your story. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can buy a separate text-to-speech program uh, that are the AI is much better than it used to be. If you buy a you know a program that 
uh, just got released last year. So it'll get more of your wording right. It'll understand more slight accents, accents and, you know, uh, differentiations of regional slang and mm -hmm. things like that, which that too is discussed in how to write a book in the character development. You've got to get across who your character is and where they're from. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, if if it's meant to be like from the, the movie I mentioned before where the crawdads thing, right? It's set in the South. You don't want your character coming across as a New Jersey, forget about it kind <laughs> of guy. If it's taking place in the South, you've got yeah. to set that character in that scene. But anyway, yeah, dictate a story in yeah. and then go back and read it a few times, edit it yourself a few times, add, move things around, subtract, and that's discussed in the book too. That's why you have to have a table of contents outline so that you move sometimes like terror strikes, just by way of example, uh, there's historic, it's this historical fiction, or as I call it, faction. faction. <laughs> there are some chapters that are historically accurate to drive home some points. Well, I purposefully then went back and moved them around my book Mm -hmm. to make sure it wasn't a chronological flow so that then the end of my book seemed pinned to a specific time period, right? Because then 10 years from now, the book is we'll stale. Yeah. I wanted to write it so that it clearly isn't yeah. chronological. So it applies 20, 30, 50 years from now. Yeah. That's, that's a really, 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 really good point. So again, anyone can write a book because we're all storytellers. So start by dictating that book and just keep going. We already talked about writer's block. Take a break, step away and come back when you feel inspired. But the goal is to make sure that you finish writing the book. Yeah, and another thing on that, mm -hmm. maybe you're not a novelist. Maybe you can tell short stories. Oh. So you here's another trick. If your short stories... Yeah. Three of them are even remotely related. You can combine them with some connectivity into a novel. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, release a book of short stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's one thing that people get stuck on. Maybe you read a fabulous book and you're like, oh, I want to write exactly like that person. I want it to be the same format, the same genre. Mm -hmm. There's just so many options today. So I think with what you're saying, figure out who you are, what type of writing you do or speaking or whatever it is, and then just tailor your book to that. And it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to be inspired by somebody, but you cannot plagiarize yes. Yes. somebody. Yes. Somebody's style is co-optable, but you should say, well, I like that person's style. I like that person's style. Mm -hmm. Combine them to create your own style, right? You are you. Like I have, you could go to terrorstrikes.info slash reviews, all right? Because reviews usually are, you know, there's that Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Amazon, Goodreads, you know, they're all over the place. So I bring them under terrorstrikes.info slash reviews one page. And mm -hmm. I share a not negative, I wouldn't say critical, but someone's opinion that prefers a book with a lot of dialogue, right? Well, that's just not my style. I'm more a narrator mm -hmm. type style writer. Now, again, that then is your style and someone's personal opinion. They would have preferred more dialogue, but then there's another review who kind of responds to her and says, this terror strikes didn't need the dialogue, which I happen to agree with. But, you know, there and they went on to say something I would have never thought of. Uh, what is it? Hemingway mm -hmm. is the king of the narrator. There is no dialogue in his books. 
none, zero. And then there are others whose books are almost all nothing but dialogue. Okay. So it depends on your personal readership uh, preference. You know, so you're not going to please everybody. And that's just the yeah. reviews. Yeah. But have a thick skin. Don't yes. have things. Not everybody's going to like your book. Not everybody's going to like your style. Not everyone's going to read your book. Right. There are, what, how many, is it billions or is it we're up to, what, six trillion people on the planet now? <laughs> uh, some will like it. Some will not. That's okay. Don't sweat it. <laughs> I, I I love that, and I think that's that's a very key point because a lot of people write books hoping that the world's going to read it. Oh, no one's reading it, and then you feel sad. And you, no, don't. Not everyone's going to like your book. Write the book because you have something that you want to share. Share your voice. Share your personal style. I like what you said. Be inspired by, by other people, but don't try to be other people. Find your true style and stay true to true to that. Not yeah, I. I uh... Like I'm a former IT guy, we mentioned that. So yeah. I use we follow Martin in Terror Strikes, who's writing a book on terrorism himself. That's why that's the main thread. It's a book in a book. Well, that's an old tried and true writing style, right? Mm -hmm. But I also introduce what me and my publisher think no one on the planet has ever done before, at least that we know of. I introduce something new and different, a blog within a book, because we're in the internet age, yep. right? And I'm a former IT guy. So that can help the book appeal to the younger generations, because it's an all ages book. Uh, not a, Therefore, then not a lot of swearing or anything like that in it. So it <laughs> could be all age appropriate. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and uh, so I thought, indeed, my style is pretty unique and different, but there's a service through Boker, uh, a company called Incubate, I-N-K, not I-N-C, Incubate, okay. that has a service called Score It, and you can go to terrorstrikes.info slash score it and see the results of their search, and that's where I found you submit your book. And this is discussed in how to write a book and get it published. Therefore, can use it for promotion purposes like I'm doing right now. That told me the top three books that Terror Strikes, my writing style, is most That's like. Right. And Dean Koontz's book called Innocence is what my book is most like. So wow. if you like Dean Koontz, you should like my writing. Yeah, that's awesome. So there's a lot to know, I know. And I'm sure people are like, oh my God, now I'm overwhelmed. I'm never going to write this book. But that's, it's, why, that's, it's why, you have, that's why you have this book that can help yes. guide you every step of the way. Let's talk about publishing for a second because a lot of people came for at least my age. All we knew was the traditional publishers. You, you submit your manuscript and nobody gets back to you. <laughs> In today's world, a lot of people still look I don't say look down, but they don't think self-publishing is real publishing. So can you just talk to us a little bit about what are the different types of publishing available today? And is there really a difference between being published by a traditional publisher versus you just uploading your manuscript on, on, um, on Amazon? Well, there can be. And okay. I briefly mentioned it before. I'm glad you asked the question so we can expound on it. Now, the old adage, you get what you pay for. If you're, <laughs> you can do it all yourself and for free, but it's all on you and it all reflects on you. And none of us are perfect. We all need help. So I don't re recommend just doing it all yourself and uploading it to places that I outline in the book you can do for free. You should rely on somebody at least to do your cover, all right? Because again, that's the first thing they see. You need to have a professional, pay a professional to edit your book. So if you're going to pay for certain things, in my opinion, you may as well pay for help on all of it. Mm -hmm. And not all places are created equal, right? Self-publishing used to be called vanity press right you put it together 
uh, write a book, and they just slight, do some editing and slightly format things and throw it out there. Times are changed. There is self-publishing also, lower end. They'll give you some help. But mm -hmm. then there are what I call assisted publishing. Mm -hmm. They are indeed, yes, much more expensive. But we're talking about professionals from HarperCollins and Penguin and all those bigger publishers that are never going to take your book. Go ahead and try. Yeah. You might get lucky. Chances are they won't even read it. But <laughs> yes, assisted publishing gives you every bit as quality a book as a Bantam or HarperCollins or whatever, because people came from those mm. uh, firms and know what a high quality book is supposed to look like and will help you make your book look like theirs. Now, whether it sells like theirs is a whole other thing because Harper Collins and all those have multi-million dollar promotion ad agency budgets. Yeah. You and I don't, which is <laughs> why you need to read my marketing chapter to help you on that. <laughs> but yeah, times are changed. Uh, there are more than just the vanity publishing that will take your book and just put it out for you. You know, get help. Uh, you get what you pay for, as the saying goes, right? But, you know, if the only way you could do it is the free route, by all means, go ahead. Uh, uh, so, yeah, there's free, there's inexpensive, there's more expensive. I lay out all those options. Okay. I, th I think that's a, a really a good point, getting assistance to make sure that your book is professionally done. Because like you said, people look at the cover, people want to read a good book. If there's too many errors, people get turned off. So if you're going to pay, you might as well pay to get it done properly. You get what you Yes. Yeah. So I, again, it's right. The cover, the cover, the cover, the cover. If your <laughs> cover isn't... It, in some way attractive or in the case of how to write a book and get it published it's pretty basic but it's still laid out to yeah. garner attention and there's a you can't quite see it in the upper right corner here but there's a brief blurb from the praise about the book yeah. section uh to attract attention then you want them to have a good back of the book because that's what they see next. Then they may thumb through it. So you want fonting and formatting to look good. Otherwise, they won't then read any of it to then decide to buy it, which yeah. is why I recommend a forward in any and every book. That is your first review. Somebody read the book and is doing a first review. Yes. And a lot of people will look at the cover, look at the back, look at the formatting. They'll check to see if there's a forward and they'll read that to see what is said about your book before deciding to buy your book. Good tip. Lots of tips today. And I hope that people who have had the desire to write a book, you're taking some notes, but more than taking notes, get the book. So that yeah. at least you have like a blueprint of how to get through all the, the entire process. So let's and I, I almost forgot, I want to throw this in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I meant to do it at the beginning of the show because we may have lost some people already, but maybe you're not interested in writing and publishing a book. Mm -hmm. Think of how to write a book and get it published, hints, tips, and techniques as a tell-all, but without the name dropping. <laughs> Think mm -hmm. of it as a behind-the-scenes book. What did I go through? Mm -hmm. What did you go through? What did Stephen King go through to bring you the books that you read? So it's also a behind the scenes book for avid readers who have no intention of writing, but you then get some insight into the industry that you enjoy having books. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So number one, bestseller. Everybody wants to be a, a bestseller. People want to get that star. And she's like, oh my God, I'm a number one bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> How easy is it to become? First of all, is it really important to be to 
have that title of number one bestseller, which you can use forever. <laughs> and how easy is it today to achieve that? Well, certainly not everybody is going to achieve that status. Mm -hmm. it, it is wonderful to have that status because yes, to some people, it matters if a book has hit number one. That is another thing that then garners you some attention. Mm -hmm. I'm a number one Amazon bestseller, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm not a New York Times bestseller. And frankly, the New York Times list is often political, manipulated garbage. I don't care if I ever make New York Times bestseller list. I earned my number one bestseller status on Amazon through actual sales, not fake straw purchasers mm -hmm. at certain bookstores yeah. to make it look like the book is more popular than what it really is. Amazon's bestseller status solely based on individual book sales within a time period. So you either hit that or you don't. <laughs> you earn it or you don't get it. <laughs> and yes, that's something nice to have, but don't write a book with the expectation, I've got to be that. That doesn't mean your book isn't good. It, it just means you're just not getting that one big uh, boost the the, and yes. hit of yes. sales yes. to yes. achieve that status. Like I'm number one in political thriller and suspense and a couple other. You can go to terrorstrikes.info slash bestseller to, to see a write-up and an actual screenshot of the Amazon page showing my book at number one in what categories. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to have. Don't expect it. Don't write expecting to get it uh hope it happens indeed but again uh nice to have but not having it doesn't mean your book is a failure please understand that <laughs> so if you had to give one tip um on how to achieve that status what would it be what is one thing that an author can do today to boost that or to increase their chances of becoming a, an amazon number one bestseller well, I, I guess you've got to go to the marketing chapter. Okay. Uh, you okay. Be prepared, right? Again, releasing your book is not the end of anything. It's just the start of a new phase, mm -hmm. right? And be prepared in advance. Uh, once your book is submitted to the publisher, obviously you've got revision and editing stages, but you'll have downtime in that month period that you're going back and forth with the editor and the cover designer and you know and things like that and the other people who may be helping you like i for my I, again i've got dozens of books but only these two are internationally available so i bought the higher end package with McHenry Press, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Illumify Media. I went with them because they had a social media director that then took over my Instagram and Twitter account for a time. Mm -hmm. So I could see how the professional did it and learn from them and then cut and pasted their items from Twitter and Instagram over to my other total of 15 social media profiles. That's a hint. Promote free option. Mm. Social media. Don't just belong to Twitter. Join them all. Mm. But, you know, there's a free option on virtually every social media platform. Join them all. And then you promote, promote, promote your book before the actual release date so that when it hits Amazon, yeah. you hopefully get that boost that gets you the number one status. But that key there is promote, promote, promote before the release, not once it's released. Mm. Of course, once it's released, then yeah, you're never done promoting. You continue promoting. But yeah, to hit that number one, you've got to 
shotgun promotion <laughs> anywhere in it. Your email list, mm. all the people in your contacts, you want to send an email, let the address it to friends at the inter.net and then list everybody in the blind carbon copy. You don't want everybody in the two or copy field yeah. where their emails are exposed. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you yeah. want to put them in the blind carbon copy, but shotgun everybody in your contacts list and let them know. I wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> Please, <laughs> it's coming out then. Please buy it then. You're my friend. Please help me achieve that number one status. Don't be afraid to shamelessly plug it <laughs> to your friends and say, hey, you're my friend. Yeah. Help me out. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, again, it's this whole mindset around what people like my book. Would they judge me? I don't want to have to beg. If the book is good enough, it's going to sell itself. No, it's not. <laughs> no. no. No, no, no. Yeah. Stephen King promotes his books. Exactly. Too. They yeah. don't sell themselves. And how many books has he already written? <laughs> exactly. So I love it. Promote, promote, promote. Thank you so much. Lots and lots of tips on how to write a book and get it published today. Thank you so much, Joseph, for all of that stuff. So I want to take you more to the personal side. So you are a cancer survivor. How did, how has that experience changed your life in any way how has it oh made you yeah today? <laughs> yeah uh uh well uh yeah well first off uh since this isn't going to be in depth on this no. uh you can go to terrorstrikes.info slash interviews i did an interview with telea on a, a survive a cancer surviving together Okay. So we did a whole show on that. But yeah, in 2010, I got leukemia, a blood cancer, hence the hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> right? I used to have beautiful blonde hair. It all came out and I decided, eh, I'm just going to shave it. And I yeah. save a ton of money on shampoo <laughs> and conditioner and a lot of time not having to blow That's dry the hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, and as you can see, that's the other thing. Keep a sense of humor. Uh, about life, no matter how serious things get, and and about yourself ex especially. And, you know, things can always be better, but they can often be worse. And yeah, I, I was literally dying in 2010. Thankfully, I'm in remission since then. I'm a cancer survivor now. So remember, um, uh, that things could always be better things could often be worse and uh you know it was just another challenge in my life and the next book i'm working on currently working titled living hell will deal with i because i have other health issues too it will be a fictional book again but there will be aspects of my life written into it and cancer struggle will be one of those things in that book so you know again you can write a fiction book here's another trick right but borrow aspects of yours and others lives and fictionalize them just as the old dragnet show says the names have been changed to yeah. protect the innocent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know bar borrow john <laughs> Borrow a little bit of John's looks or Joe's looks <laughs> and Peter's looks exactly. to make a character and Harry and 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 you know whomever else is whoever yeah, character character as Martin Luther King Jr. said content of character it matters in developing your character borrow aspects of other people to make a unique mm. personal character for your character don't say uh my buddy pete here i really <laughs> like him so i'm, I'm gonna copy his image <laughs> and his personality and no you don't want to do that <laughs> I, I i love it and you know Again, I've been through a lot of adversity in my life and a lot of my book, in my book, a lot of the stories are about my personal life and what I've been through. And so I asked that question because I know how 
some of the things I went through in my life inspired me to want to share my story and tell my story. And maybe it might be able to help someone else. Like you said, I also see a lot of humor in life, regardless of what happens to me. I try to make light of the situation and just keep pushing forward. So for anybody who's maybe been through something, maybe that is your story. Maybe that's the story that you want to share with the world. And even if you don't want to share it as this is my personal story, you can create a fictional character too and still share parts of yourself with the world because we do want to hear your story that's that's how we survive you know we thrive we're natural storytellers and we love listening to other people's stories so if you have it in you or you've been sitting on the fence and you've been thinking about writing a book well now you have the blueprint to write the book there's no more excuses you know exactly what yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to do you have all the steps you have the guide you have uh, someone who's so experienced who's written so many books who is ready and willing to help you give you all the advice so you don't have to make the mistakes a lot of us made you don't have to get a typewriter you don't have to submit to all the publishers and get rejected you can just write your book and get it published in a short time yeah robert there if you look at you could go to amazon and find it they have a look inside feature uh, you know, yeah. it shows you the first few pages. You'll yeah. see the praise for that book section. Yeah. And as Robert Thibodeau says uh, in his, that he wishes he had my book before he wrote his books. Because, yeah, I help you structure things so that it's easier. But it is indeed entirely up to you to determine what your style is. I can give you suggestions. You then have to decide what's easiest and best for you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So much content today. So I'm going to be posting in the show notes some of the links that you did mention so that people can. All right. And yeah, we, we covered a lot. <laughs> we did. Uh, but believe me, there's still a whole there's lot more in the, the book. book. Yeah. So buy okay. the book. Again, <laughs> even if you're not thinking about writing a book, learn what writers go through exactly to get you the books you love <laughs> absolutely thank you so much for being here with us joseph truly appreciate you thank you for having me i really appreciate it awesome thank you to everyone for listening who joined in today to listen i hope you gained a lot from our conversation again i will be including in the show notes a lot of the information that we shared so you can go ahead and write that amazing book i will see you all same time next week on i rise conversations with joan thanks for listening